Good morning. We're going to give just a little bit. I hope y'all doing good this morning. Some of y'all that's logging on, just let me, give me a thumbs up or something that you, the sound's good and all that. We'll give just a few minutes. And uh, for everybody to log on. Hope y'all stayed warm last night. Good morning. Brother Keith, Miss Lisa. And the Mitchell household, good morning everybody else that I it's already slid up, I can't see. We'll give just about a minute and uh, let everybody log on. I know a lot of churches, including us, had to cancel because of uh, the weather and road conditions and parking lot. And uh, we're praying for those pastors and churches as well. Hey, Brother Travis. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. Drew. We're going to do just a little bit longer. Thank you all for tuning in. And later, if you want to, you can like and share. We'd appreciate that. Good morning, Miss Josie. There's the Wolf Residence tuning in, Miss Carol. Good morning to all y'all. Um, while we're waiting on others to tune in, um, if you have a prayer request, you can simply comment in uh, uh, on the video or uh, message uh, through Messenger, and uh, we'll uh, help you pray about those. I know there's many requests out there, um, and uh, so just put those in. Prayer request. I'd sing to y'all, but I can't sing. My wife laughed at me just then. Um, I'm trying to regain my eyesight. This little stand that's, this phone zone's got a light and I was looking into it as she turned it on high. So I'm still seeing spots. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, we're gathering our eyesight back in. Good morning, Miss Pam and uh, others who I've missed. Um, we're going to be in a very familiar passage of scripture this morning. Uh, as people are tuning in, um, we'll be in Job chapter 1 this morning. Uh, a lot of us could probably quote this uh, and know the story of Job. It's uh, 42 chapters. Um, but we're going to look at some things in Job's life that may help answer um, some of the things that uh, we as Christians today might be uh, going through or uh, um, being... Um, burdened down with, I don't know, but uh, we'll be in Job chapter 1, Job chapter 1, we'll be looking at the first 12 verses, and uh, we'll see what the Lord's got in store for us again, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, our our prayer is that we could always be in church, but sometimes we know that that's not, uh, uh, we're not able to do that just uh, to keep everyone safe, and they, uh, a lot of the roads around here have still not been pushed, um, and the parking lot is terrible. And I know of several other churches uh, that has canceled uh, services for today and is doing live stream. So that's what we're going to do. Um, but good morning, everybody. We'll be in Job chapter 1, and we'll begin reading in verse 1. The Bible says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings 
according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? that thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power and only upon him put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your day. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. Lord, we thank you for the snow, Lord, that reminds us that our sins can be washed uh, as white as snow. And Lord, we thank you for that promise that Isaiah laid out in the very first chapter of his book. And Father, we thank you today for allowing us the opportunity to gather as your people by way of live stream when we can't gather at church. I know many years ago, Lord, when church was canceled, it was just... Uh, the day was canceled as far as meeting, but I'm thankful that we have this opportunity and the technology that we can share your word with your people this way, that we can gather one with another in one mind and one accord. Father, we pray for all the ones that are sick this day, Lord, the ones that are hurting, Lord, the ones that are suffering from all manner of diseases and sickness. And Father, we pray most of all for the lost this morning, that something be said or done in this place today, Lord, that they would be drawn to and by the Holy Spirit to get saved this day. And Lord, that heaven be their home. And Father, that uh, we'll just thank you and we'll praise you for uh, the reading of Scripture, Lord. We pray now that you'd bless it. And Lord, that you would be in everything that's said and done and that you would get the honor of it all in Christ's name. Amen. We find in Job chapter 1, Job, the Bible says, uh, he lived in the land of Uz and the Bible in the very first verse says that he was a perfect and upright and one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Now that word perfect in the text doesn't mean perfect as you and I know it. It means that he was a perfect man according to the law. He lived by the Jewish law. So we know that that had been instituted. Now it is said that Job is the oldest written manuscript that has been found. And so therefore it's the oldest book in your Bible. But we find that Job was a perfect and upright man according to the law. We find in the text that he was a wealthy man who had a lot of different things. He had land, he had animals, he had a large family, lots of property, and that um, he had great basis by materialistic things in his life. Now we could preach on the subject this morning, which we're not, but we're going to just touch on it very quickly is some people think they just need to serve God because of the blessings that they'll get out of being good people. That's not at all what Job's life represented. Job's life represented everything that you and I uh, are have the ability to be blessed with in serving God. We find that he had everything going right at this point in Scripture. We find that everything in his life was down to um, the jot and tittle uh, of the word and he was living a blessed life but there was something that we see in the text that is bible or that the bible tells us that his children feasted now in that feasting we see through um, the first few verses that there was sin in their lives and job recognized this as his children can i say this it is always good to keep our children in mind no matter what age they are, these were adults, so to speak, and Job kept his eye on the way they lived their life. We have an obligation as Christians, as parents, to raise our children up as godly people. Now, are they going to fail? Absolutely. But are we to pray that God keep them in the, keep them in the center of his will always? Absolutely. 
But here we find that Job has done nothing wrong up to the point. In fact, we find that uh, he's been blessed with all these things and all this has happened. And then in verse five, it says, and it was so when their, the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. He's talking about his children. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. He's referring to his children. But it said that he went out and it said that he thus did Job continually. This wasn't the first time Job had made the morning sacrifice. This wasn't the first time he had built a, a fire to the the, for the offering. This, it said that Job had done continually. Can I say this? We need to petition the Lord continually on behalf of our families and on, on behalf of our children and on behalf of our churches and our church family. We need to always be going to the altar, so to speak, our prayer closet, our place with God on behalf of our people. It said, thus did Job continually. He never let up day in and day out. He went before the Lord. Can I say uh, we'll gain strength in the hours that we're living in if every day that we get up, that we go before the Lord continually, not only on behalf of our family, but on behalf of our sin and on behalf of our uh, fault and our failure and our needs. Job know the secret to being God's man. Now we find in verse six, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. I want you to notice this very key text. And in that text, it says, and Satan, Satan came also among them. We find that the sons of God had made their presence in, in the presence of a thrice holy God and the devil himself showed up with him. It, it has never changed since the days of Job. I imagine this very day that uh, when we are um, petitioned in the throne room of our God, Satan is alive and well this morning, and he's going to get in the mix best he can. But I want to preach to you a message this morning that's called, Why Does Bad Things Happen to Good People? Why do bad things happen to good people? That's a question that's been down through the ages. Why do um, young children have to suffer that of cancer? Why do God's people that try to live holy and, and just and, and accordance to God's word, why do they have to go through things like they do? Oh, I pray when we get to the end of this message this morning, I pray that you would have some clarity on that. First of all, it is to show why bad things happen to God's people is this. God is still sovereign. God is holy. There is no fault in him. There is no failure in him. There is no wrongdoing in the sovereignty of God. Um, we find in Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 that his ways are beyond finding out that uh, they're, they're not for us to understand at times. Can I say that if you're a child of God and you've uh, never been to the point in your life that you don't understand why God's doing some things, then you need to get in his word and, and, and figure out you and I, there's things that we can't figure out as God's children, and it's not meant for us to. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We sometimes as God's people go through things that we'll never understand. We'll suffer loss that we've never suffered before, and we'll not understand it. And we may never understand it this side of eternity. But the fact of it is that we are to trust in the sovereignty of God. Now we find within that uh, sovereignty... Uh, the very God, the creator, the one that throwed all this into existence and spoke it into existence there in Genesis chapter one in the first few verses, we find that God is an infinite God and we are a finite people. He's sovereign. That he has always been, he has always, God was not born. God has always been. Before there was nothing, there was God. And we need to trust in his knowledge because it is a knowledge that you and I cannot comprehend. But it said that Satan came with the sons of God. Sometimes why bad things happen to good people is this. God is proving you and I. That word prove means that he is testing. That word means that he is trying. That means that we'll have trials and that we'll have troubles. You, you say, preacher, will God test us? You better believe it says that he chastens 
the ones that he loves. And if he doesn't do that, and I'm paraphrasing, that we're as good as bastards and son. Uh, 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 so what I am saying, and not sons. So what that is saying is fatherless. Bastard means fatherless. And sometimes we're going through trials and tribulations that God is testing our faith to see how we will react to what we're going through. Somebody ought to say amen right there. We find that we are tried as Christians. Can I say this if you're listening out there this morning and you've never been tried or you've never been through a trial or you've never had a heartache or you've never been afflicted as one of God's children, I would first of all check up uh, on my heart. Because the true child of God, we're going to go through some things. We're going to suffer loss. We're going to suffer the things of this life. Why? Because Christ suffered. He came in flesh to know that the life that we live. Listen, you and I are not exempt because we're Christians. One of the biggest falsehoods in all of Christianity is this, that the moment you get saved, the moment that you that you surrender to Christ, the, the moment that you are converted, the moment that you become one of his, that everything's going to be a hunky dory and a bed of roses. That's the biggest bunch of hogwash that's ever been put out, and it's straight out of the pits of hell. Amen. Uh, once, once you are a blood bought child of God, you might as well take a nice paintbrush and put a bullseye on your back, because just as it said in verse six, Satan came with the sons of God. He wants to be in the midst of it all, and listen, he's not worried about the ones that's for uh, forsaken Christ. And 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 have and are lost and undone. He knows that he's got them. But friend, the devil can't stand when God, through His sovereign grace and His mercy of the blood of His Son, saves somebody. He knows that that life is now a uh, possession of the Lord. But He's going to do all He can to be a thorn in our side, as what Paul said. Amen. We find that it's to prove us. Why do children suffer the way they do? I can't answer that. I cannot answer that. Why would God do that to such a precious little child, such innocence? I cannot answer that. But I can do through the pages of Scripture that God does try his people. And through that uh, trying of his people, he gives those people a testimony. Some of you are, you are that are listening have been through things that I've not been through, and I've been through things that you all have not been through, and our testimony can help somebody. Now, it might not help a congregation of people, and it may not be meant to help a congregation of people, but it may be able to help just one. What you've been through may be able to help just one. What I've been through may be able to just help but one, but it helps that one to become a Christian through the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why are we tested? Well, first of all, it keeps us humble. It keeps us from being so proud. You know, the biggest, uh, the biggest problem in America today throughout God's people is pride. They're proud. They're prideful people. We don't like to be told that. You'd say, preacher, I don't like to be told I'm proud. Well, friend, the fact of the matter is we can tell about one another uh, that our pride can sometimes steer us away from God. What does being proved do? It keeps us grounded. You know, uh, it keeps us, uh, in modern language, I guess you say, keeping us from getting the big head. It keeps us from getting uh, over and above our raising, as the good country folks say. Can I say this? Being proved by God is not a bad thing at times, though at times it seems like it's the most terrible thing that could ever happen in our life. We suffer loss of loved ones. We suffer loss of jobs. We loss of family, loss of friendship. We find that, uh, you know, churches um, suffer loss at times, uh, what they call church splits and, and all that. We find that there is loss in this hour. We find that God wanted to prove Job. He actually, you know, we always think that poor old Job was just uh, uh, just somebody the devil wanted to pick on. No, friend, I'm here to tell you, God said this. Have you not considered my servant Job? There's none like him. In fact, uh, back in verse number three at the end of the verse, it said, so that this man was the greatest of all men in the East. Can I say this? You will read from Genesis to Revelation this morning. You will read throughout the whole pages, but you'll not find outside the Lord Jesus Christ a man more Christ-like than Job. Job had it all down pat. He done all that he could do as God's man, and here we find that God himself 
puts Job out on the platter for Satan to try. And in fact, he just tells uh, Satan, he said, you can do anything to him you want, anything, but you can't take his life. And we find if we read on down through those uh, 42 chapters that Job has lost his family, all but his wife, and she's half crazy and every right to be. He's lost his family. He's lost the farm. He's lost all of his homes and buildings and structures. He's lost all of his animals. And then he has three wonderful friends, if that's what you want to call them, show up. And they're not much of friends because they start pointing their fingers at Job saying, well, because you've done this, this is why you suffered. And because you've done this, this is why this is happening. And they're not much of a friend. It sounds a lot like uh, Christians today. We have a lot of finger pointers. They'll come and sit down beside of us and give us just a little spell for grievance. But we find after a little while, they start pointing fingers and saying, hey, this is why this is happening to you. This is why God's doing this to you. This is the way the uh, the trial you're going is because you've done this. No, friend, that's not right. God may be trying us and testing us today. Why does good or bad things happen to good people? we find that it's not only to show us the sovereignty of God, but it's also to prove us, to test us, to try us, to see if we're really refined. You know, in the Old Testament, we read a lot about gold and gold was refined by fire. And what that fire done, that gold was placed in there and any impurities that was in that gold by way of heat and of flame and of trying, those impurities were drawn. Are you following me to this morning, church? They were drawn out of that gold to make it as pure as, as possible by fire. You know what? If you're finding yourself in the place like Job and you're doing everything you, uh, you can possibly do as a Christian, you're, you're studying your Bible. You're up on your prayer time. You're up on visiting the sick. You're up on Bible study. You're up on going to church and have good church attendance. And everything is that on your end, you're doing right, friend. And you're still finding yourself in the midst of it all. Uh, all the trouble and all the trial, friend, don't think nothing bad of God. He's just purifying you and I this morning that we can be pure. Now, can we be 100% pure down here in the flesh? Absolutely not. But the soul of man, the, the soul that never dies, the one that'll live in eternity, we can have a sinless man by the purifying work of the fire of God. Amen. We find that God sometimes does this to prove us. Just because you see someone that's God's child going through a trouble and you said, Preacher, they're doing everything right. They're 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 living by the book. They're they're doing the best they can, and and look at all their suffering. You know, it may be that God is just proving them and purifying them. Now, thirdly, thirdly, and I don't even know what time it is, but thirdly, we find that when bad things happen to good people, sometimes it's just to show us that we need to trust Him just to trust him. You know, we're living in a day where we put our trust in a lot of different things. We put our trust in uh, what we see on the television. We put our trust in what we hear some person say. We put our trust in what some um, book says outside of the Bible. But friend, this morning, God says just to trust him. You say, preacher, why has all this happened over the last year? I can't answer that. But God knows and that's all that matters. I, I, I want you to turn with me uh, very quickly to Job chapter number 38. Job chapter number 38. Now for 35, a lot of people don't realize this, but after chapter three, God never speaks to Job, never answers a question, never shows his presence, though we know he's there, but he never answers any of Job's question. But notice what happens in verse 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man. Those are harsh words that are coming from the Lord. For I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Now notice what the Lord begins to say. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? 
or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, there they are again, shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as it had been uh, issued out of the womb? And when I made the cloud the garment thereof, and the thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors. God answers Job in the very first verse, out of the whirlwind, in the middle of a storm. Friend, you and I may be going through the storm this morning. I don't know what you're going through, God does. But can I tell you this? It may be in the very storm, in the very fire, in the very trial of your life that you've been going through for days, maybe months, or maybe even years, that God will soon answer you. He will answer you in a place of chaos, in a place of trial. It said that the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind. I don't know about you, but a whirlwind reminds me of a lot of a tornado. Uh, it has a lot of destruction in its path, but right in the eye of a storm, we find calm. Can I say this? The only way you'll ever find calm in the middle of your storm is to get cuddled right up close to Jesus Christ, your Lord, and just seek his face. Though things might be falling apart around us and may uh, things may be tearing down and things may be happening in our lives, God is in control. And he begins to ask Job in verse number four of chapter 38, Job, where was you? Where was you when, when I laid the foundation of the earth? Job, where were you uh, when I spoke all this into existence? Job, where were you when I formed the earth and the vast universe and flung the stars in the sky and know them all by name, the psalmist said? Job, where were you? And of course, Job doesn't answer because he knows the answer. He wasn't there. God was. You say, preacher, can you wrap your mind around it? No, but I believe it in faith that God spoke everything that you and I know and don't know this morning by spoken word into existence. You say, do you believe it happened by Big Bang? No, I do not. Do you believe it happened by evolution? No, I do not. Do you believe that? I No, I'll tell you what I believe. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You say, preacher, I can't wrap my mind around that. That's okay. You don't have to just believe that he did because that he did in faith. We find that he says, Job, where was you when I done all this? Where was you when I formed the sea? I'll never forget, I had my children at the beach some years back, and, and we find that the waves at high tide come way up and that low tide go way up. But I had one of my kids there, and they asked, why does it just come this far? And I, of course, give the scientific answer, the gravitational pull of the moon. And by scientific, we do know that that does. But my mom was there, and she goes, no, it's because God told it to stop right there. You say, preacher, where do you get that? Well, he said that he set doors and bars upon the waves there in the text that we just, God tells it how far to come. And even in the storms, when it crashes against the wall and overfloods the city, God tells it there's a point in time that it's to stop, go back to where it came from. And you have to believe that in faith this morning. Sometimes why bad things happen to good people is this, that we are taught through those trials just to trust him just to trust him. You and I need to put more trust in God. I see so many of God's children this day worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. What are we going to do a week, a year from now, a month from now? What's going to happen? It does not matter because he is in control. He's in control of our lives. He's in control of the universe. He's in control of it all. You say, well, recent events doesn't set well with me. It doesn't have to set well with you and I this morning. As long as it sits well, uh, well with God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit in their sovereignty and in their will, it is perfectly fine in the universe. Amen. We find in verse uh, 42, uh, the Bible says, in verse one, or chapter 42, verse one, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no fault can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech ye, that word beseech means Beg, I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare unto me. Isn't good to know that things are all right in the Father's house this morning? 
I'm glad to know that through the life of Job, a man that done everything right, a man that had it all in place in the beginning, and we find that he complains a little bit through the text down through the 42 chapters, but friend, Job had done nothing wrong. Job had, had done everything he was supposed to do. You and I may be doing everything we're supposed to do this morning, and God himself has allowed Satan to come with the sons of God, and he's laid us out there to prove us. Why is he proving or trying to prove his children? Just to show that we are real. You know, we're living in a world today that we don't know, a lot of times know what is real, but friend, I'm here to tell you, God, through his sovereignty and through his mercy and through his grace, will prove us to the point that we can prove to a world that Christians, blood-bought Christians are real and we're sincere and we do care about others and we do show love and we do, uh, you know, we we would uh, feed, the, feed the hungry and shelter the homeless and do all that, but we do have a principle that we do have to live by and that is God's word and Friend, we should live by God's word above all else. Uh, we This should be uh, the, the final uh, factor in our lives in all manner of uh, faith and practice is God's word. We're doing what we're supposed to do, but God's just showing us and showing a world that we're truly his. Some of the greatest Christians that I've ever, ever known and some that are still here, some's gone on to be in glory, Excuse me, they went through trial and tribulation and loss and everything, and they come out on the other end of it praising God. You know what? If we'll get to where we need to be as Christians, no matter what trial we're going through, no matter how bad it may get to good people and God's people, not that we're good because the Bible says there's none good but God. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. The only way we can be good people is by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and that it plunges forth out and that that's what the world sees. They don't see us. They see Jesus. They don't see this robe of flesh that we wear because it's carnal. It'll fail. It's born in sin, the Bible says, and shaping in iniquity. But that inner man, the one that we put off the old and put on the new, we find that uh, we find that, that can be used for God's glory we find that we can be a lighthouse to a lost and dying world. We can be a friend. And if we're to have friends, the Bible says in Proverbs that we're to be friendly. You know what Christian people need to be? We need to be friendly. We don't need to back up on God's word and back up ground. We need to hold down the line. But we can be friendly and we can show love. And we, no matter what we're going through, you know what? We just need to smile. And you say, preacher, it's hard to smile in the middle of a storm. Friend, I'll tell you, it's a smile. Uh, Mary heart doth good like a medicine, the Bible says. If you'll smile, that smile will dig a little deeper down into the heart and soul of who you are. And it'll begin to make you feel better. Uh, I always say this, a yawn. You know, people get sleepy. They yawn. That's the second most contagious thing in the world. But And the, the very next question I get a lot of times is, well, what's the first? Well, the first thing that is the most contagious in all the world. We, we've heard a lot about being contagious over the last. The most contagious thing known to man on this side of glory is a smile. And if we begin to smile and other people begin to see that we're happy even in the midst and we have joy in the, uh, in the midst of our storm and our trouble and our trial, uh, they'll begin to say, I want what they got. And the only way they're going to get that is by being a blood-bought child of God. It's not going to be by their works. It's not going to be by, uh, by paying tithes and offerings. It's not going to be by attending church or uh, being on the Sunday school roll or the church membership calendar. Friends, it's going to be because they desire to have a relationship like you and I with the Lord Jesus. We find that sometimes... Bad things happen to good people. Why? Because God has to know that, uh, to let us know he's still sovereign and that it's to prove us, to test us, to keep us, to refine us. And we find that thirdly, it's to show us that we're just going to have to trust him. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know, but I know the one that holds tomorrow. I say that often. You say, preacher, what's going to happen in all this? I don't know, but he does. You say, what are we going to do, preacher? We're going to keep trudging on and trudging on with joy and we're going to keep holding the banner high so that all the world might see that Jesus Christ is really who he said he is. He was virgin born, lived a perfect sinless life, 
went to Calvary, died on an old rugged cross, was beaten, scourged, beard plucked. Uh, the brow was planted with thorns. And friend, I want to tell you this morning, if they can see that in us, that is all that our purpose as Christians is. It's not to show them a just holy life because if we're living in him, we are living just and we're living holy and we don't need to brag about it and tell others about it. They'll see it in us. And the only way we'll do that is by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And if we'll show them Jesus Christ, friend, there'll be a lot of people in that day that'll come up and thank you for having a burden for them, praying for them and listening to them you know what, it's okay to just listen to people's trouble sometimes and not do all the talking and Lord, just listen to them. Let them pour their heart out before you and say, hey, you can do that same thing before Jesus Christ this day. You can talk to him like he's your best friend because he is. Friend, there's sometimes in this life we just got to learn to trust Christ. I'm gonna leave you with this and I'm done. I, mean, I love to read and I love to study and uh, it's just one of my things. I just, I just love it. But as I was reading this morning, this, this little poem by none other than D.L. Moody come up and I jotted it down on paper. Very fitting for the text. D.L. Moody labeled this troubles, sunshine through rain. Help me to see the sunshine through the rain, what I count loss may somehow be gain. Help me to sing when I would cry, knowing that thou art standing by. Friend, no matter what we're going through, we'll go through. There's a God in heaven that loves us. And if we're his this morning, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about because uh, we can have peace knowing that it is the will of God concerning us in our lives. I pray somebody out there today needed this. I pray it'd help you. I pray God would use you. I pray God would give you peace. I pray that he'd give you strength. I pray that God would give you comfort. I pray that God would give you everything that he knows that you need, not what you and I think we need, but what God knows we need. We love you guys. We'll end in a word of prayer. May God bless your day, touch your heart, and bless your soul. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the good word of God, Lord, and the promises of the precious pages. Lord, we thank you for the ones that's gathered by way of internet this day. Lord, you know the hearts of them all. Lord, you know the cares, the troubles, the trials, the storms. Lord, we can look at the life of Job and see, Lord, that even when he was doing everything right, Lord, there was a time of testing in his life. Lord, I pray that we would have peace, Lord, that when we're going through things, that we know that we're in the center of your will, that even though we do, that you have everything in control. And Lord, that you are sovereign and that you are holy and that you are who you say you are. Lord, we pray that if there's one that's lost out there today, Lord, I pray through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God, that, Lord, they begin to feel conviction down in their heart and realize their need to be saved, that we're just lost sinners that need the grace of an almighty God through the mercy of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray you bless the remainder of the day. Lord, if there be one traveling, Lord, grant them travel mercies. Lord, I pray that if there's one out there that's listening that's sick, Lord, that you begin to heal them. Lord, I pray that uh, someone out there will get a blessing from this message today. Lord, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good day.